Today we have a brand new clear and untrimmed 110 scale touring car body. We're going to get it mounted up on a chassis and cut out some really nice wheel wells showing you guys some really easy ways to take the guesswork out of mounting and prepping your Lexan body. For our clear body, we're using the Biddy Design M410 Ultralight. It's a very thin Lexan material, so it can be lightweight in the end. To mount the body, we're going to use the magnetic body post kit from Biddy Design. These use magnets to help you align the body to get those holes marked. With that, we're going to use the Biddy Pen. It uses a very fine tip uh, that you kind of need to get into the magnet. And then lastly, we're going to use this race form arc cutter. Now this is a really nice way to precisely cut out the arc in your wheel well on your bodies. So this guy is adjustable between 60 to 70 millimeters. Uh, so it's kind of specific for tent scale uh, on-road vehicles, touring cars, you could use it on a drifter. A uh, lot of applications within that tent scale on-road category. So first things first, we have our touring car chassis here. We're going to set the body on. Just get a look at it. It lines up pretty well. I need to remove that wing. We're just going to do a rough cut on this. Here's the bitty kit. They come in various colors. It's just a post with about a six millimeter in diameter hole there. And you just slide it right over the body post. So we'll get these mounted up. The magnets on top that comes off snaps right into place. This is going to be perfect. The first step in getting the magnetic markers on our body posts are just to take off these little body perches. We need those off of the body posts. Quick note, the inside diameter of these mounts is six millimeters. So as long as your body posts aren't thicker than that, they'll fit. All right, we have the Biddy Design magnetic holders on our vertical body posts. Let's put the body on and see how it fits. So it looks all right. I think the body mounts may be a little bit high, but we can adjust that down the road. I'm gonna put these magnets on now. So these magnets are just very small. I, I can't even really show it there on camera, um, but these magnets now just go on the top and they, they go right on the center of the magnet underneath. So they snap into place really well. So I just put all four on there. Now this body is pretty secure. So one of the coolest things about using these magnets to, to secure the body on here is that we can make little adjustments to the body. So as long as I hold the chassis still, if I need to move the body left, right, forward or back, I can just move the body a little bit and the magnets stay in place. They do not move. So you can move the body however you need to, to, to get it adjusted perfectly. And then you can use the little pen to mark your holes. So let's get our pen ready. This is not going to be hard to do. You can see the bitty pen. It has a very small tip on there. It's very fine because this inner diameter on these magnets is not very big. So I want to make sure my wheel wells are lined up. That looks pretty good. Okay, I think I've got it lined up pretty good. So we're going to mark our holes now. So what we need to do now is basically just remount these holes and they should be pretty close where we want them. So we remove the magnets. We've got our body mount holes done, all four of them. I just wanted to point out though that you could leave those un, uh, untapped. You could leave those holes untapped because we marked them with the Sharpie. So you could paint the body and do that later if you wanted to. Although one thing to note, if you are going to wait, you better pop those holes before you remove the overspray film because that film will take your, your Sharpie marks with it. That looks pretty nice on there. All right, the body's on there. That looks pretty nice and the body's fitting on there really well. These body mount holes I reamed out just to the right size. So the next thing that we're going to do is use that race form arc jig, which is a really cool little device. This is it. It basically has a nut here that you back out on the wheel wells about where that axle is that nut. We're going to ream a hole in the body. And then essentially this piece goes inside the body that pokes through the hole that we've just reamed. And then you mount this jig on there, 
put the net back in place and you can spin this all the way around to cut out your perfect arc. You will need one standard hobby blade. This is like an X-Acto blade that you can find. They're pretty common. This is going to just attach into these uh, button head screws here, just securing the blade underneath the head of the screw. Quick disclaimer about the Raceform arc jig. The X-Acto blade does not mount underneath the screw heads. Instead, this block is a two-piece block that you can put the blade and wedge it right in between and then tighten the screws. And although the blade did work on the outside the way it was used in this video, it's not correct. You want to have the blade in between the blocks sandwiched in there and it will not move rock or go anywhere. I had one time the blade come off when it was being secured underneath the heads of the screws when cutting out an arc and that is really unsafe. So again, the blade goes in between the two blocks, tighten the screws and it's sandwiched in there and can't move. Okay, we've got our blade secured there in, underneath those button head screws. So our jig is ready to go. Now we just need to mark our holes right here. One quick thing before we mark our arcs right here, we need to have the body at the right height and it's not sitting all the way flat. So we're gonna go along the bottom and cut the extra Lexan off. Um, that way the body will be suspended and not hanging on the table. All right, we've trimmed along the bottom of the body. It's just a rough cut. We could always take a sanding wheel on a Dremel and clean this up quite a bit because it does look a bit rough. There are a few different guidelines here for depending on how low you want to have the body. That's kind of nice on this Biddy Design body that's on the sides and the front here. I don't know specifically where I'm gonna want it for this car, but it's good enough to at least get it mounted on the body posts. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, we put our body purchase back onto the body post. I think the height is right. Let's get the body on here. And I think that looks pretty good. Just looking here, it looks like the front end may be able to come down just a hair. But I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm not gonna mess with it. But yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we can mark our axle holes. All right, I ran off to grab some extra body clips. I'm gonna clip this body onto the car so it cannot move anywhere and then we will mark those wheel wells. All right, I've made my marks on the wheel wells. I'm just inspecting how they line up and how much they're off when the suspension hangs freely. It's just, just a tad. Of course, there is going to be a little bit of droop when the vehicle sits under weight. It's gonna be heavier than it is now because I don't have a battery in there but our marks are pretty dang good. So the next step is to pull the body off, use the jig on it, and the next time the body returns on the chassis, it should have those nice clean arcs in the wheel wells. So on our first wheel well here, you can see I've popped the hole right through. This is our back plate, and it has this foam pad here on this side, which is kind of nice, because you are going to be pinching it in there so that's how it looks. I think that's pretty snazzy. We're gonna put our jig with our blade on the top, which spins on bearings. Tighten the thumb nut. And I believe we just give it a turn. The body is done. We've gone and cut all of the arches out of the wheel wells and it's turned out pretty dang nice. Now, this body still has some work to do. We have more trimming, uh, maybe a little bit of sanding. Here in this front arch, the wheel hits just ever so slightly. So there is a little bit of trimming to do on this body to get it finished. But for the mounting part and for cutting out the wheel well part, uh, these tools that we used worked really well, the Biddy Design Kit and the Race Form wheel arches. And there's one thing to note about those wheel arches is that even pre-painted bodies typically come with a little window in that wheel well area. So you can still use that arc cutter 
on pre-painted bodies, it shouldn't be an issue. And that's what makes the Biddy Kit and the Raceform jig so nice, is that you can use them on a body that's clear or painted uh, and results should be equally as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on these body prep tools. They're really handy tools to have in your arsenal. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment down below. And if you want more info on anything we talked about today, we'll have links down below for you too. My name is Brett with A-Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.